Hello and Namaste. In my last post, I mentioned that there are several discoveries in physics that are pointing to the fact that universe may not be a random consequence of a random event. Last week, I spoke about the fundamental physical constants and how fine-tuned they are. This week, I want to talk about another fact which is again pointing to the non-randomness of the universe. Entropy. All of us who have studied science are familiar with this term. Roughly translated, it means the disorderliness of any system. According to the second law of thermodynamics, all systems including the universe constantly move towards a state of higher entropy. We tangibly experience this law every day in our life. Let's say you cleaned up your house and neatly organized all your stuff. Such a neatly organized house is a low entropy system. It is inherently unstable. We all know that it will never stay that way. In a matter of days, it will become more and more disorganized. If you leave it unattended, it will descend to a state of complete chaos. We all have experienced this. This is an example of how entropy keeps on increasing. This is a common but rather crude definition of entropy. What entropy actually measures is the number of ways the component parts of something can be arranged so that it looks the same. Do you remember the example of handful of sand from the last post? The entropy of this handful of sand is the number of ways the individual particles of sand can be arranged so that the handful looks the same. There are countless ways in which you can arrange the sand particles and the handful would look the same, isn't it? We say that a handful of sand has a very high entropy. Now can you understand why high entropy systems are common and low entropy systems are rare? Let me explain with another example. Let's take a deck of cards. Now consider a neatly arranged deck of cards, starting from ace of spade to king of hearts, like this. How many possible ways can you arrange the cards in this sequence? There is only one possible way these 52 cards can be arranged in this order. This is an extremely low entropy arrangement of a deck of cards. Now you shuffle these cards. How many configuration of shuffled cards can you have? It is a very high value, 52 factorial, which is a 68 digit number. This is the number of arrangements of a shuffled deck of cards. Hence, a shuffled deck of cards is a high entropy state of a deck of cards. The probability of this state is very high because there are more than 8 into 10 to the power of 67 arrangements of a shuffled deck. A properly sequenced and arranged deck of cards, on the other hand, has a very low entropy because there is only one arrangement in which it can exist. The chance of a random shuffling resulting in this configuration is one out of a trillion, 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 trillion possibilities. It is so, 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 so very rare that when you encounter a neatly sequenced set of cards, you have to assume that someone has arranged it. You'd be a fool to think that a shuffled deck resulted in this configuration. Now let us take a closer look at the entropy of our universe. As per the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of the universe is continuously increasing. As we move forward in time, the entropy becomes more. What happens if we move back in time? As you travel back in time, the universe has lower and lower entropy. When you reach the Big Bang, the entropy is really low. 
It is the equivalent of that neatly sequenced deck of cards. I read this analogy which perfectly illustrates what this probability looks like. Say there are 10 billion people in every planet, 1 billion planets in every solar system, 200 billion solar systems in every galaxy and 500 billion galaxies in the universe. If every single person on every planet has been shuffling decks of cards since the beginning of time at 1 million shuffles per second, even then, even then, every possible deck combination would not have been shuffled. Now expand this number from 52 cards to trillions, the number of particles that make up our universe. What is the probability that a random shuffling arranged these particles in a neatly ordered low entropy system? When we encounter a neatly sequenced deck of cards, we infer someone must have arranged it. So what should we infer when we see this neatly arranged low entropy beginning of our universe? We can only conclude there is an intelligent principle so powerful and so omniscient that it could create this low entropy system that set our universe into motion. If you were to extract the definition of God that is common to all the religions of the world, it would be this, isn't it? An all-powerful omniscient consciousness which creates and governs the universe. This is the second reason scientists are proposing that there are infinite universes. If there are infinite universes, then one of them could have begun with a very low entropy and we happen to live in that one. That's the reasoning. Like our deck of cards, if every possible shuffled configuration existed, then one of them would be a neatly sequenced configuration, isn't it? You know what is even more fascinating about entropy? Time itself is born in entropy. None of the fundamental laws of physics contain the flow of time in their equations. Newton's laws, Maxwell's equations, Einstein's relativity or quantum mechanics. Not one distinguishes past from the future. That is why Einstein said, the distinction between the past, present and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. This arrow of time that we experience, where we can only move from the past to the present to the future and not the other way around, is because of entropy. Without entropy, we will be justified in claiming time is an illusion. It exists only in our mind. The second law of thermodynamics, which says that entropy keeps on increasing, is the only fundamental law of physics which encodes the flow of time. That is the only basic law of physics that distinguishes past from the future. Only one which speaks of the flowing of time. I read this book called The Order of Time by the Italian quantum physicist Carlo Rovelli. This is how he describes entropy. This dance of ever-increasing entropy, nourished by the initial low entropy of the universe, is the real dance of Shiva. One can almost imagine Nataraja dancing his Ananda Tandavam and setting this universe into motion, where everything from the galaxies to the smallest of atoms are vibrating to the timeless music of his Damaru. I end this post with a salutation to Nataraja, the cosmic dancer, the one who creates time and destroys it too, the one who is time itself. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and like and share this with your friends. Press the bell icon for reminders. Until next week, Namaste.